A thousand bucks for a grow light? That's kind of what my wife said too, give or take a few expletives. So what's all the fuss about? Well, to sum it up, spectral quality, efficiency, and lumen maintenance. This, my friends, is not only the ultimate grow light to power lush, compact, vegetative growth, but it can also work great as a supplemental flowering light too alongside a 1000 watt HPS. You're looking at the 240 volt non-air cooled fixture. You can get it in 120 volts too, as well as higher voltages for larger installations using three phase power. I have to admit that I'm a little bummed out that I took the plunge just before an air cooled version came out, but I'm also loving the results from this open fixture. Just be sure to use suitable lamps that are rated for use in open fixtures. There are some ceramic metal halide lamps out there that do not have the extra protective outer jackets like the Philips do. Trust me, should the arc tube rupture on an unprotected ceramic halide lamp, you do not want to be in the same room. No, sir. It's just like my Aunt Peg after Tuesday taco nights. Clear out. Okay. As you can see, the LEC 630 houses two lamps. Each lamp is 315 watts. The bad news is that they cost just over a hundred bucks each. Ouch, yes, more money. But listen, the good news is that the lamps come included with the fixture. And here's the really important thing. You won't need to replace them nearly as often as a regular metal halide. In fact, Philips boasts 90% lumen maintenance at 8,000 hours of use, and this only drops to 85% after, get this, 20,000 hours. <laughs> That's incredible, my friends. The longevity of the Philips lamps is due to the microprocessor controlled low ignition pulse required to start the lamp. This massively reduces wear and tear on the arc tube during warm up compared to, say, oh, a 1000 watt HPS that typically requires a much higher ignition pulse. Right, what else? Well, actually, I'm not even done yet talking about efficiency. 1.9 micromoles per watt per second. That, my friends, is a whole lot of par. And if you don't know what par is, then do check out my other video that explains it all. Now, in that video, I can see that par is a useful measure of lighting intensity for plants, but it's not the be all end all. True. Okay. Spectral quality is also crucial for optimal plant health and development too. And this really is where the CDM lamps shine. Both the 3100 Kelvin and 4200 Kelvin lamps boast a full spectrum, not just a big peak in the blue or red portion, but they also have higher amounts of UV for increased pest and mold resistance and essential oil production, and far more red too. So the lamps are driven by two Philips low frequency electronic ballasts. These are incorporated into the fixture itself, one at either end. The ceramic arc tubes are also able to withstand highly caustic sodium amalgam even at very high pressure. To be on the safe side, you'll want around a three foot distance between the lamps and your plant canopy. I've had it as close to 30 inches and the intensity is incredible. But you do start to feel the radiant heat, which will inevitably stress your plants. For multiple overlapping lighting patterns using 1000 watt DEHPS, you can hang the LEC 630 at the same height, making it easy and practical to mix spectrums. I'm achieving 300 to 600 micromoles over a four x four area here. And using my infrared thermometer, I can see that I have no radiant heat issues at a three foot distance. The leaf temperatures are consistent. Optically, the Philips CDM lamp is superior to standard HPS or standard probe start metal halide due to the round construction of the arc tube, helping to create a more even light plane. I'm particularly impressed, not just by the PAR readings directly beneath the lamps, but across the entire 4x4 plane. And this is thanks to the high quality reflector, which is largely comprised of 98% reflective German micro silver. Awesome! You need to treat the lamps with respect. Don't cut the power before a CDM lamp has come to full brightness or you risk permanently damaging the lamp. A vertical base up lamp position, as in the LEC 315 model, is actually superior in terms of lamp performance and optics. I find there's much less direct radiant heat from the lamp as it's vertical in position, so like I said, do take care to hang the fixture at an appropriate height. To summarize, if you're looking to give your indoor plants a flying start in life with compact internodal spacing, health, and vigor, then this right here is your upgrade. Grade. You'll reduce veg times and through supplementation during flower, you can increase quality, taste, and aroma too. After using the LEC 630 as both a veg light and as a supplemental light for around six months now, it's hard to imagine growing without it. So questions and comments down below, you should know the drill by now. And a big thank you to all you fantastic subscribers. Without you, YouTube would feel all lonely and narcissistic. Kind of like my Instagram account, ever a stuff, ever a stuff, ever a stuff. Seriously, if I could pickle all of you infinitely lovable subscribers into a jar, so that I could periodically sneak in a midnight nibble, I would. Ooh, someone's a dill. So with that in mind, hit that big red button and deliver me an extra gherkin's worth of love. And if it's girthy, please be gentle. Thank you and bye-bye.